uh, Maher Al Kabi. I'm the board member, uh, one of the board member at the Serkal Group, which is a 165 years old family group, which has been very instrumental in bringing up a lot of businesses to the UAE market, particularly Dubai, such as Telecom, First Bank, Second Bank, insurance companies, and many others. UAE has been evolving a lot. And the numbers I mentioned inside, which actually testimony how much the UAE has developed in terms of sustainable finance. To reflect some of them now, in the last year, 2021, before the 2022, the sustainable finance allocated about $605 million only. In, by end of 2022, that figure went up to $8.5 billion, so that's more than 13 times. So that's mean not only awareness is there, but there's also a drive in terms of uh, financing towards sustainable project and ESG related matters. Before that, I think it's not only the mandate we talk about because mandate came in very recently. It's a sheer drive of how do we preserve our economy? How do you preserve our planet? And this has been happening for a very long time. An example I quoted inside was about Mustard. Mustard been there in existence for 14 years when people did not talk about finance, sustainable finance or even renewable energy. So Mustard has been pivotal, taking a pivotal role in the Global Economy Forum in terms of supporting the R&D for a lot of startup companies and locally and internationally. Come to Mohammed bin Rashid Solar Park, which also has been a pioneer in terms of developing solar panels, the energy they're trying to build from the renewable energy sources. So if you take both of them, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, they are actually house of the world large, one of the largest solar panel producer energy coming in from there. And the commitment they have put in for the coming couple of decades is $165 billion. These are staggering numbers for the economy of our size. I think more than a challenge, we need to have clarity on regulatory environment. We need to make sure the regulation provided by the government along with the stakeholders, there are clear definitions and KPIs along with them. That will reduce the gap between understanding understanding what is sustainable, not sustainable. So that's, an, uh, I would say, mission number one, very critical mission. Mission number two would be, how do we create awareness? How do we make sure everybody is aware of the same things, which is alignment? Number three, the third mission, which is another very critical thing, whatever we put as a framework, how do we actually make sure that we make use of it and transparently share it with everybody else? The example I give is, you've got varying tax regime for sustainable finance in different regions, economies, and, and businesses. Now, if for investors, he does not have that clarity, there's no incentives for them to come and invest into the sustainable finance. So you need to create that harmony and uh, making sure the definitions are correct as well. Only then you'll be able to bridge the gap. UAE is already taking a lot of initiative in this matters, which is about collaborating. So UAE is collaborating quite a lot, and now we know that uh, COP28 is going to be hosted in Dubai this year in November 2023. And that initiative is taking worldwide initiative. How do we make sure that we bring everybody aligned to the whole what we want to do? For example, collaborating with governments and having a series of meeting of what we want to do. So a, a big framework is done, but then how do we make sure that we detail all this kind of thing in terms of project management? and those milestones are built up. So UAE is taking that strife, not from now on, for almost 14, 15 years, Mustard was a key thing, uh, Mohammed Rashid Solar Park was another thing. The regulation that we put in over here in collaboration with the private sectors, that is helping. And you can see the reflection of the, in the numbers in terms of the sustainable finance uh, amounts has been done, generated over the four years. So the banks now also becoming very um, Cog uh, cognizant of the fact that they need to support that. So in terms of the reporting, the, Fed, uh, the FSA also have said um, in the local market over here that you need to declare about your ESG, how much finance is being done towards that. Quite a lot of them. I think the same risk that we share today, those will become opportunities. But I think a lot of opportunity, environmental opportunities are there and also there are economic opportunities are there. From an economic perspective, you're creating a, a new market job. So you have a lot of people coming in and doing a development. R&D is happening over there. So that's a huge economical impact for the, for the industry. The, if you look at the environmental related matters, you're working towards project where you have sustainable energy requirement. You're reducing the CO2 emission, which is the most challenging thing. Of course, methane is another thing, but CO2 is a very, a very, very, I would say, um, dire strait that we need to attack that thing. So if you do a proper sustainable finance, you're helping environment directly. I would like to thank you for hosting such an event. Amazing, good panel discussions have been there, enlightening for a lot of people. So uh, we would like to see you uh, next time, inshallah.